service will be coming back in person. So that starts at 9.45, from 9.45 to 10.15 next Sunday, and then we just go right into uh, the service. So, uh, yeah, that seems good. Okay, uh, any other announcements? I think we're doing good. Okay, all right. Uh, go ahead, Nick. I'm just going to settle in here. It's just so beautiful to come together to share in this new way of living, this new thought philosophy, living in the awareness of our divine source energy, this one divine presence that we call God, that expresses as love for all equally. This presence lives and moves and has its being in this present moment, right now. Can you feel that? Can you sense that? Right here and right now. This present moment in you and in me. And so right here, right now, I invite you to breathe with me. Breathing a mindful breath. We slow down and we ease into that center space of stillness within. Oh, yeah. 
So let's speak our vision now. This center offers a path for awakening to the realization of oneness. Open hearts, inspired life, empowered love. Our spiritual community welcomes all people to embrace oneness as the truth. Together, we see a world of love, peace, and abundance for all. And our mission? We recognize and realize the omnipresence of divine love as the truth. I will 
as we breathe into the stillness, as we breathe into our heart space, we feel that essence, that true place of reality, the place of the divine. And with each breath, I know that God is all there is, the ultimate divine reality, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. For God is the feel of infinite possibilities and unconditional love, the source of all creation. It manifests in love, in peace, in joy, in happiness. It manifests in the all good. And this is where I live, move, and have my being united in this oneness of the divine reality. And this is true for me, and this is true for each sentiment being. And this is true for each of us here today. So here in this oneness, I declare that we see anew, that we see ourselves as powerful spiritual beings, fully aware that we are blessed by God by spirit in every possible way. I claim our unity in this God space. As I know, divine intelligence flows through each of us, expanding our vision of all that is possible for ourselves in the world. Unlimited solutions that enhance the goodness of our lives flow from the divine wisdom that guides, directs, and protects our choices. Trusting in the all good of God, we release all that doesn't serve our highest and greatest good. Being grateful for all that is possible, we attract our perfect life experiences now, embracing a life of love, ease, joy, peace, and grace. And I turn my attention to the request in the prayer chest. As I declare that each request is already manifesting in wholeness, perfection, and completeness, peace, harmony, health, abundance, all is assured as spirit guides, directs, supports, and illuminates each request in the perfect path. I know the service is blessed. The staff, the volunteers, just freely give in their loving service. And we are so blessed by them as they are blessed. And we are open and receptive to the message today that expands our awareness and aids in our direct experience of a higher consciousness. So in great gratitude for our expanded visions and perfect life experiences, in great gratitude for the truth that we are love and light, I release these words into the law, knowing that goodness is unfolding right now as our life, as we join together and declare, and so, so it is. is. Get ready. Oh. 
I'd like to call your attention to the prayer chest. If there is something that's weighing heavily on your mind, if there is something you'd like a, just a little bit more, as Brenda says, mojo, <laughs> just please put your name in the prayer list on the prayer chest, and I'll be doing affirmative prayer on your behalf this week. And please know that all prayer requests are all confidential, so you don't have to worry about anything. In ordinary life, we hardly realize that we receive a great deal more than we give, and that it is only with gratitude that life becomes rich. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Gratitude places you in the energy field of plenitude. Perceiving life in a consciousness of gratitude is literally stepping into another dimension of living. Suddenly, the seeming ordinariness of your days takes on a divine sparkle. Right. Michael Beckwith. <laughs> oh, good old Michael Beckwith. <laughs> right? Okay, so maybe we could do lights up. Are we? Uh, oh, there's, yeah, there we go. There we go. So, we've started a 30 day experiment in shameless guilt and unabashed joy for the month of November. So anyone who wants to experience something different in their life might see what this ancient spiritual truth has to offer. Gratitude, she was talking about. In her book, Thank and Grow Rich, Thank and Grow Rich, Pam Grout shares a fun and playful way to transform your life into a more joyful adventure by using what she calls ferocious gratitude. So uh, how have y'all been doing on your 30-day experiment? Um, have you been able to remember to claim into the universe before you jump out of bed? Before I see some hands saying yes, yes. And you know, it's not easy. It's not easy to remember. And I really think uh, one of the biggest stumbling blocks in spirituality or in, in, in practicing a spiritual life is just simply remembering to do it, remembering to place your attention there. So that's what she's asking us to do for these 30 days in November, uh, practice ferocious gratitude. And we're gonna talk about the experiment just a little bit uh, later, we'll bring it back up. 
If you don't have a handout, there's also handouts available that have this uh, experiment on it so you don't have to remember everything yourself. She, she also gave us five capital investments that would help us to recognize the riches that we already possess within us. And she says, if we diversify our investments and work on mastering all five investments in ourselves, then financial riches are the natural outcome to that. So, uh, you know, a little bit different way of coming about financial riches. So last week we talked about the first uh, a capital investment she called alchemic capital, and it was using the practice of gratitude to literally change us in every way, a way to transform our energy and therefore trans transform our life, okay? Looking for the good in everything, seeing things differently will change our life. This week, we'll introduce spiritual capital, and that would be using the practice of gratitude to enable us to recognize that everyone and everything is sacred. Like for song, we're standing on holy ground. We are sacred. Everyone and everything is sacred, as God is all there is. And so I'd like to uh, read a little bit about spiritual capital that she wrote in here. <laughs> and I'm going to, whatever I'm reading, they're her words. I'm not making this up, so. I just want you to know that ahead of time. <laughs> so if I say something racy, it's she said it, okay? Just saying. So she says, uh, building spiritual capital. Practicing gratitude allows us to recognize life at its deepest, holiest level. It opens us up to the realization that everything is sacred. Every moment, every person, everything. That's a lot. Every person. Most of us completely miss the life that's throwing itself at us. The life that holds nothing back, obsessed as we are with our problems and petty annoyances. As my friend Frank once observed, so preoccupied is he, often with his thoughts, Jesus could walk by glowing and everything and he'd never even notice it. <laughs> Boy, I can... It, you know, in your own mind, in your own thoughts, you're, you're lost in it. I do that a lot. Um, he says that, she says, that burning bush that spoke to Moses, it may have been burning the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Gratitude enables us to recognize that the world is infused with the presence of something magical, something sacred. Although we make valiant attempts at creating magic, by planning big vacations, organizing perfect parties, choosing just the right outfit. The presence of this something more often shows up in the most ordinary of moments, in the most ordinary of settings. She says, I'll never forget the time I was walking across the kitchen. I have no recollection of what I was doing, maybe taking a dirty dish to the dishwasher or checking to see if the strawberries were thawed. Doesn't matter. What matters is that suddenly I was overwhelmed with a sense of joy, a sense of life, and all its fierce beauty. I knew in that moment that no matter what the balance of my bank account, no matter if I got the, that coveted assignment or not, all was well. Not just well, but so intensely beautiful that if I didn't watch out, I might spontaneously combust with sheer rapture. <laughs> Anybody ever feel that way? Yeah. yeah, I'm sure everybody's touched that. We're going to sing about that. When I was a boy each week, Sunday we would go to church, pay attention to the priest, he would read the holy word, consecrate the holy bread, 
Everyone would be in the crowd To take the only difference is Everything is holy now Everything, everything, everything is holy now When I was in Sunday school We would learn about the time Moses split the sea in two, and Jesus made the water wide. I remember fear and sad, miracles don't happen still. But now I can't be trapped, cause everything's a miracle. spiritual capital again and I just want to read a little bit before we start into the, the video maybe this was where the racy language was I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> okay so spiritual capital and the, the quote is uh, by Paula Diarghi and she says God comes to you disguised as your life mm -hmm. that's something to remember 
Uh, she says, we're all born with huge reserves of spiritual capital. Very few of us maximize its potential or allow it to appreciate. Nowhere is the return greater. So why have we relegated our spiritual capital to the back of the dusty vault, hardly even registering its existence? She says, here are the top three reasons. Number one, somewhere along the way, spirituality took an uncool turn. <laughs> she says it got co-opted by a bunch of fundamentalist religions who turned God into a judgmental prick. There's the word. <laughs> I knew it was there somewhere. Uh, they introduced us to a God of don'ts and gave us a list of rules and commandments that rein in our natural impulses. That's the first reason. Uh, the second, the perks got pushed into the future. Self-appointed spiritual purveyors also forgot, forget to mention that God, or she calls it the divine energy, or uh, what else does she call that? I can't, she, she says FP, I can't remember what that is, is available to enjoy and use now. Asking us to wait for the bennies is to miss the whole point. Okay. She says, number three, it's, well, invisible. It sounds insane, trusting in an invisible force, turning your life over to something that's nothing to the eyeballs. She says, my current favorite definition of spirituality comes from Rain Wilson. Here's how he described it on a recent podcast. He's describing spirituality. We humans have a whole bunch of things in common with monkeys. We both enjoy bananas, groom each other, spend a lot of time on our hair. We both have a pecking order, form tribes, and sometimes when we're really mad, we throw feces. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with these things per se, but spirituality is everything we don't have in common with monkeys. It's that part of us that creates beautiful works of art, that has inspiring conversations, that contemplates meaning, that strives to be in service to other people. She's, so that was, that was Rain Wilson, so here she is again. So how do you connect with this non-monkey part of yourself? She says you follow your joy. Anybody heard that? Right? You follow your joy. You move toward your impulse of bliss. You follow that path. Invest your energy in the invisible force that powers the universe. There is never any doubt about what to do next or which path to follow. Because we're taught just the opposite, we're taught get good grades. Make sure people like you. Stop running around and whooping like a wild banshee. <laughs> We spend our lives wondering, what does God want from me? What am I supposed to do with my life? She says, it's all there in living color. Spiritual capital is getting in touch with what I call the field of infinite potentiality. That's the FP. Field of infinite potentiality. Others call it God or Buddha or divine intelligence. It matters not one whit what you call it. What matters is that you call it forth that you recognize its immense power and real-time practicality, okay? She's got party games in the back. Do you guys want to hear a party game? Okay, so this is this week's party game. The uh, quote is by Jay Heinrichs. It says, where would the Jedi be without the dark side? Wow. <laughs> in this game, you're going to get in touch with your cosmic self. You're going to use the ordinary moments of your day to become aware of your naturally expanded, unlimited self. Anytime you think of it, let your attention recede from what you see in your viewfinder. Take a moment ever so often to notice the outer edge of your field of awareness. The Way of Mastery is a channeled spiritual book from, from the Shanti Cristo Foundation. She calls, they call it focusing on the shimmer underneath. That's nice, isn't it? We're even going to go so far as to count every disturbance as a blessing. 
Okay, I'm going to read that again. We're even going to go so far as to count every disturbance as a blessing. We're going to say thank you for everything, especially for things about which we normally think this sucks. <laughs> because each time a this sucks moment crops up, it's one more chance to embrace it, forgive it, and yes, even love it. Because then and only then, it's free to be on its merry little way. <laughs> when you live on the joy frequency, when you shift your vibration to the realm of the miraculous, what longs to be expressed through you comes alive. You say to the universe, or, you, or it says, she says, say to the universe, let me see beauty, let me see love, let me see God. When that becomes all you want to see, that is all you will see. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so I want you to enjoy Michael Gott. His uh, uh, title is With Grateful Hearts. Here he is, Michael Gott. into a bar. As often happens in these jokes. <laughs> it's pretty deserted. It's early on a Monday night. He sits down. He orders a beer. and It's very quiet. And he hears a voice. You look amazing. Who said that? It's like maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. It's like, that tie matches your eyes perfectly. So what is going on here? About that time, the bartender came back up and said, I hear a voice complimenting me. And he said, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the peanuts. They're complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but what if, what if life was loving you like that all the time? What if life already is supporting you, reaching towards you with all that you need for a life of fulfillment, wholeness, happiness, freedom, success? What if that were true? How would we live if we knew that truth? It is Thanksgiving week, and we're going to talk about gratitude today, and I, I just have to share that um, today is 19 years of continuous sobriety for me. So when people say, to God be the glory, that is absolutely true. I, all I did was show up one day at a time, and by the grace of God, I have not had to put any alcohol or drugs in my body for 19 years. And that doesn't work for somebody like me unless there is a divine intervention, unless there is some power in life that is reaching out, that is supportive and uplifting and healing. Unless that's true, I wouldn't be here today. And I know many of you have not experienced addiction, but there's something in your life, there, there's some point of resistance to the goodness of life, or you wouldn't be coming to church because you would have it all figured out. You would have transcended and moved on to another experience. But you're here today because there is a calling. You know that life is meant to be good. You know that there is a greater something calling to you. And we gather in spiritual community to remind each other of this truth. That we are meant to be blessed. That we are already whole, perfect, and complete because we are expressions of God's own nature. This is who we are. I lost a dear friend about three weeks ago. Um, she's a musician. She's been here on this stage in the Pyramid Etika Luckett. She was uh, just, she and her musical partner and life partner, Lisa Ferrero, they're incredible people, souls, musicians, and just, it's always a reminder, right, that everything here is temporary. Whenever I do a memorial service, I always end by 
reminding people that this moment of celebrating a life that in the human realm has, has ended, has completed, it's an opportunity for all of us to remember that this is a limited time offer. How are we using our time in this body to experience the good of God? And how much of our life are we spending in resistance, in fear, in struggle, in pain? Etika has a song that she wrote called Awe. And I think, you know, we're talking about gratitude, but awe is like one step more. You know, that's, that's like where you're, it's just so good, you're just kind of like, you know? Like, what do I say? But it is just so big. She, in the song, she says that in every square inch of blood in our body, there are 70 billion cells working together for my health and for my good. It's a conspiracy of life. The hook of the song says, if we're not in awe, we're not paying attention. If we're not seeing life as this wonderful opportunity and invitation to experience the magnificence of our own being and the connected, connectedness of all life, we're missing it somehow. We're, we're, we're reading our own bad press. We're believing in our, our own self-condemnation and our thoughts of not enough and lack. And guess what? That's the good news and the bad news. The bad news is that you're missing it. The good news is you're at choice. It's easy to be grateful for something. Amen? Like we get a blessing, what's our response? Thank you. Thank you. That is, that is transactional gratitude. I get, I say thanks. We're going to a deeper level than that today. We're talking about volitional gratitude. I choose, using my will and volition, to step into a space of thanksgiving regardless of condition. When the Apostle Paul said, give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God according for you. This is God's will for you. He never said, give thanks for all things. It's not based upon a transaction that I get my good and then I say thank you. No matter what happens, I place myself in the position of giving thanks. 19 years ago yesterday, the conditions of my life did not support a very prosperous future for me. And yet, 19 years ago today, was the first day of a new beginning, free of addiction. That's my story, one of my stories, of this idea of stepping into a new choice and a new relationship with reality, but there are many. And the uh, invitation is always for us to move. God really has a message for us, I can feel it, yes. <laughs> we're invited to move. It's really just shifting the way we're seeing it, from it's all terrible and happening to me, to life is good and happening for me. And when we realign our thoughts, then God's got something to work with. When we open up, we, we let go of our resistance. You know, Michael Beckwith says there are four kinds of pain in this world, right? Resistance, 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 and, oh, you're paying attention. <laughs> but when we move into flow, and that is a choice we make. It is a choice we make to live from the truth, the truth of our oneness with God or to live from the space of seeming separation and lack. It is our choice. I've uh, talked many times on the story of the exodus from Egypt, of the, the Hebrew children. It's a powerful story of moving from one place of being confined and constricted by life into a space of freedom and promise. That's, it's, uh, it's one of those great stories of humanity. It tells how, how it can be for us individually and collectively. That's, and in unity, we really take it up personally. Where am I oppressing myself? 
Where am I in bondage to my own negative thought? Where am I in bondage and slavery to my own addictive thinking? Where can I be set free and find that land of promise? So the story is long. You've seen the movie, right? A lot of things happen. It takes a long time to get them moving out of Egypt. The Egyptians come after them. They cross the Red Sea. And then they move right into the promised land. Am I right? Do you remember how long? 40 years they wandered in the desert. They needed some GPS. <laughs> God's positioning system. <laughs> 40 is, in a num is a number in, these numbers are not literal, but 40 is symbolic of the time necessary for complete transformation. But they were about ready. They had gotten there. They, they found it. <laughs> and Moses called together a representative from each of the 12 tribes and and asked them to go and scout the land of Canaan and see what they could see. And he asked them specific questions. How's the fruit? It's, it's, it's in the Bible. <laughs> and he knew that it was time for the first grapes to be harvested. Go check out the fruit. Is the soil good? Are there people there? Do they live in big cities? Are they strong? Do they have big armies? Go, go find out what's happening there. How is this land that we've been led to? And Joshua and Caleb led ten other scouts, and they went out into the land, and they discovered many things, and they came back. They, um, there's a story, in my children's Bible, I had as a kid, there was a picture from this story of two men with a pole and one gigantic cluster of grapes hanging from it. I don't know if that actually happened, but it's an image that has stayed with me. That they had gone into the land and discovered bounty and abundance beyond compare. It was a bigger life that was calling to them than they had ever experienced. Because these people had been enslaved, working seven days, all day, with no day off, no pay. They were enslaved in a, in a system of struggle and oppression. And why is this story relevant to us? Because we have been enslaved in a system of struggle and oppression in our own thinking. We think life is difficult. We think that we're never going to be good enough to get what we want. We're never going to have that experience of love and fulfillment and connection. That is a system of oppression in our thoughts. And the idea that there is something so beautiful and magnificent stirs our hope, gives us something to move towards. So Joshua and Caleb report that the land is just as you said, Moses. It is flowing with milk and honey. There are some people there, though. Now, this is not a tale of empire and conquest. This is instead metaphorical and metaphysical. The land that you need to occupy to fully embody your potential for life of fulfillment must first be cleared of the unlawful occupants. And this is your belief system, your old ideas about the way life works, and the, you know all of that stuff. It's those people, those thoughts, those ideas are already living in your land of Canaan. The Joshua and Caleb said, we can do this because God has called us to it. This is ours. Now, the other ten had a different report. They said, ain't no way. They got big people. The descendants of Anak, who was a giant, saying they are big. And they have big cities and big walls and a lot of people. And as a matter of fact, we need to elect new leaders and go back to Egypt. When you are called to live a life of expansion and increase, you will be given every opportunity to go back into bondage. And it will seem like a good idea sometimes. To, you know, I didn't have much, but I knew where everything was. <laughs> and, you ever heard the phrase, you can never go home again? In the 12 steps, they talk about it this way, that there's nothing worse than a head full of AA and a belly full of beer. 
You can't go back to the way that you've been. You can't unknow what you know. And I'm here to tell you, life is good. And there is an expanded version of your life that is already given to you. And you must be the one to do the work, to conquer the old thoughts, to evict anything that stands in the way of you being the light of God, as Jesus said you are. And this is work. Nineteen years that I've been sober, you know how I did it? One day at a time. I had some days that were a struggle. I had some days that were joyful and expansive. But it was just one day at a time. Not of my own power, but of a higher power. The grace of God being sufficient. And when I could get out of the way, follow some simple instructions, take some simple actions, one day led to another to another. If I could have seen, if somehow I had some magical mirror and I could look ahead to 19 years and see this day, I would never have believed this possible. But something knew, something in me knew that there was an expanded life waiting for me. And guess what? Something in me today knows that there is still an expanded life waiting for me. And I still have people holding the land that ain't supposed to be there. This work continues. We are here to reveal who we are so that we can find a place in the world that is a fit for our gift, so that we can receive the kind of fulfilling experiences and connection that is ours. And our gratitude and our awareness is the way that we choose to see the truth. Because the people of Israel, they, they could have chosen to believe the two or the ten. Guess which they believed? They believe the ten. Because it is easier to believe in lack of limitation because we've got a lot of experience of that. <laughs> and so the people cried out, like, oh my God, what have you done to us? You've let us, it, was, it would be better that we die in bondage than die in warfare. And they wanted to elect new leaders and go back home. The story goes on. It's a, this is in the 13th chapter of Numbers. I read like nine chapters in Numbers this morning. and Have fun with that if you're called to it. But <laughs> there was more grumbling and more complaining and more dissent. And the, the basic gist of the story was that none of those who were born in bondage were able to move into the promised land. Because this represents for us metaphysically that you cannot enter into the truth of your being with the consciousness that still believes in the lies. Einstein said you cannot solve the problem with the same mind that created it. You cannot forgive with the same mind that believes you've been wronged. You must be willing to open to allow, to surrender, and something then is possible for you and for me so that we can step into this, this truth of who we are. You've heard the phrase, fake it till you make it. My friend, uh, Reverend Bar Bernardo Montserrat, he wrote a book called Faith It Till You Make It. <laughs> and I would even say, faith it. To reveal it. You already are it, but you must walk by faith and not by sight. Every day. Keep doing those practices and those, those things that you know will align you with truth. Keep that gratitude journal. Come to this church. Take these classes. Read the spiritual material. Talk to your friends in honest, open, spiritual relationship. This is the way that we faith it till we make it. And over time, we'll see everything changing. So, any other achieving types in here? <laughs> I have read this story for many, many years, and I've always thought, yes, go conquer the land, drive out the giants, get the grapes, yes, <laughs> go make it happen. And so everything is a struggle, everything is a struggle until you get it all solved and figured out, and then you're there. Anybody else have that experience? 
Thank you for raising your hand. I see you. We'll talk later. <laughs> this summer, we had um, Karen Russo, who's here for our, part of our Retreats in Faith. She spoke at the Big Sky Retreat, and she, she teaches a lot about this idea of divine masculine and divine feminine energy. And when we're, she teaches really around prosperity and abundance, but it's applicable to all areas of life. And she says that it is the divine masculine that is about intention, choice, and action. Conquer the land. Go get the grapes. And the divine feminine is about awareness, gratitude, the ability to experience satisfaction. That last one, I never heard that one before. Now, I've been friends with Karen Russo for about 12, 15 years. I've heard her speak a dozen times. I've read her book. And I said, did you just add that part? And she said, no, it's always been there. <laughs> when the student is ready, the teacher appears. <laughs> my consciousness couldn't see it. Because I had been so focused on achieving as my identity, conquering, overcoming, that when I finally get it right, then I'm like, see me? Here I am. And don't look at all this stuff over here. When I found out they gave grades in school, whoo, A's, only A's. I was hooked on achievement in first grade. <laughs> they say ministry is an opportunity for you to grow up in public. <laughs> I'm having an experience of a new revelation of God's good and share it with you. What if it was all okay just as it is? What if I could experience the satisfaction of life even when it's not all put together yet? Or I hope it will be someday. I used to take piano lessons for years and I was a, a good student because I like to achieve. And when I would get a particularly challenging classical piece, I hated the process of learning. I mean, the mistakes drove me crazy. The, the difficulty of it, getting my fingers to do it, the frustration, I mean, it was horrible for me. Type A, achieving addict, addicts, as I mentioned. But then when I finally conquered it, and I could play it and get the applause, it was wonderful. And so the question I'm asking of myself today, what if I could love the process of learning the music? What if I could love the process of learning the music? What if I could be okay with not having everything exactly right? What if I could be okay with people seeing that I don't always get straight A's? The Divine Feminine invites us to an experience of feeling satisfied in life, just as it is. I used to be afraid that if I, yeah, the reason I've never seen that in Karen's teaching before, because I don't think I've ever let myself feel satisfied. Because even, here's the trick, even when I would get the, the song pretty much learned, how many perfect performances do you think I gave in my life that really met the standards of my inner critic? Two, maybe, <laughs> that I can think of. If you're not satisfied when things are a mess, you're not going to be satisfied when they're neat. And what this invites us into is an experience of allowing, opening. That just where we are, the fullness of life is available to us. I'm not suggesting we make agreement with struggle, but you will struggle. We're wired for it, as Bernie Brown says. I'm not suggesting that we make agreement with difficulty, but I am suggesting that even before you get there, wherever the heck that is, the promised land is already within you. And so this Thanksgiving week, I invite you to live your life one day at a time, loving it just as it is, even with that kid who's acting crazy. Loving it just as it is. And trusting that there is an intelligence and a wisdom in life that is even now rearranging the pieces in ways you cannot see or comprehend. And you will find yourself in a new land one day. And not even really know how you got there. 
And some of us wait on the sidelines until we get perfect before we step into the game. What I'm inviting you this week is to step in. Love life just as it is. Love yourself just as you are. Yeah, I used to resist satisfaction because I thought if I, if I ever was experienced satisfaction, I would quit trying. I would quit achieving. I would quit growing. I would just sit on the couch and eat Fritos. <laughs> what I'm finding in these past weeks and months is I'm experimenting with allowing myself to feel the satisfaction of the divine feminine is that I've actually become more productive, more motivated, less stressed, more trusting of the good of God. Forgiving and receiving allows life to unfold fully. And our affirmation? I am a free agent of God, spreading joy wherever I go. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for these friends, Mary. 
with gratitude for the abundance of spirit in the, in the participation in this law of circulation, I know that these gifts go forward, bringing great love and blessings to our church, our community, and our world. And so it is. So it is. here for the first time. If you're here first time for CSL, welcome to CSL. Um, I'm sure everyone will give you a, a great big welcome as well. Uh, Tamara can answer any questions that you may have about our center. She'll be hanging around in here where there's more room. Actually, she, Brenda, I've had to change to the top of the stairs. I don't she'll be at the signal. top of the stairs. It's <laughs> an update. She's at the top of the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and she can also take your debit yeah, well. credit card if you, to get service yeah, on that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you choose to uh, either give money in any way, that way she can do that at the top of the stairs. Yeah, she also has to hold one hand up like this, and one leg like this. And you have to stick your tongue out. Thank you, Tamara. And uh, I also want you to, I, I want to say one more time about the prayer chest. It's down uh, in the lobby, to go to your right. It's covering the, going downstairs. Um, please fill out a prayer request form if you have any kind of a challenge or uh, like she said, if you'd like some, some mojo on some kind of an adventure that you're going for. Uh, we have this, this beautiful opportunity to have Lou Kunzelman pray for us in her own personal prayer time and keep us in her prayers. And I think that's very valuable and I'd love everybody to utilize that as well. Thank you, Lou, for your service to our center very much. All right, and I, I want to right now go over very quickly the 30-day experiment for anybody who wasn't here. So every day in November, so the 30-day experiment comes out of the book, right? Every day in November, we're following a two-step Thank and Grow Rich program. And it is on the handout if you want to take the handout with you. Step one. So put that slide up there, Jeffrey. See if that's in the right place. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Okay. So step one. Every morning before you, this is her words, before you throw off your covers, before you leap out of bed, before you fire up the old Mr. Coffee, proclaim to the world that something unexpected, exciting, and amazingly awesome is headed your way. So... Let's do it together today, just in case we haven't. Let's all say this top one together. Ready? Something amazingly awesome is going to happen to me today. That's step one every single day. Step two, write down or share with someone five, no, three. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that as five. I better start five, right? That would be me. Oh, I'm <laughs> uh, three blessings for this day. Three different things you're grateful for today, different than yesterday, okay? So those are the two steps. So good luck with that. Keep going on that. And now we're going to claim our good together. Uh, these, these affirmations are also on the handout. If you take those, you can say these uh, constantly as well. If you're like me, you'll say them 400 times instead of just four. I don't know. So here they are. We're going to say them all the way down. Read over them for just a minute so you know what they say. Okay, here we go. Number one. My body is vibrant, healthy, and fully functional. Claim it. My mind is vibrant, healthy, and fully functional. Be grateful. My heart is vibrant, healthy, and fully functional. My life is vibrant, healthy, and fully functional. I am so grateful. I'm in the right place at the right time. Place at the right time. 